He ain't never heard this stuff in the Bible. Come on. But when they have heard it, well, when you hear this word, we're sowing the word, now you hear the word. Satan cometh immediately. Who cometh immediately? Satan cometh immediately. Who cometh immediately? Satan cometh immediately. Joshua 6. Satan cometh immediately. Satan cometh immediately. Satan cometh immediately. Satan cometh Right. The Israelites, the people that he chose, broke the commandments, and they ended up in slavery on slave ships scattered all across the earth. The earth. Right. So when that happened, God said, what? Read it again. And thou shalt become an astonishment. He said we will become an astonishment. We look at our people today, look out into society. We are astonished as a people. Maybe other nations look at us, they shake their head like, look at these niggas. Look at these, look at these people. We're in astonishment. They have a tour in Charleston, South Carolina, where white folks get on it, so-called white folks. They get on, 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 on carts and horses, and they trot through the neighborhoods looking at black people. Bring it out. Bring it out. And they got fringes hanging at the top of it. Right. Making a mockery of us. Why? Because they, we have become an astonishment. Come on. A proverb and a byword among all nations. Among what? All nations. Among all the nations, we have become a byword and a proverb. And a, uh, a byword and a proverb. Come on. Among all nations, whither the Lord shall lead thee. So God led the true Israelites, the real Israelites, have been led away captive. How do we know that? How do we know that the real Israelites are not in the land today? The people that are in Israel today, they are not the real Israelites. They have stolen, they're fighting over land that don't belong to them. That land belongs to us, brother. This is our punishment and we were driven away from our land. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 10 and verse 12. And now Israel, what doth the Lord thy God require of thee? But to fear the Lord thy God. We got to learn to fear God. Meaning, what's today? What's today according to God? Bring it out. The Sabbath. Sabado, today is Sabbath. Right. But our people still don't know that. Right. Right, Troy? Right, Corn? That's what you said. Our people still don't know that. Yeah. We still, when we look at our phone, we pull our phone out, and we look at the phone and look at and say the first day of the week is Sunday. Right, right. And God said, keep the Sabbath holy, which is the seventh day of the week. But we still ain't came to the common sense of that. Because America has built and designed us to break God's commandments. Right. right. That's what they've done. Why do you think they pay you on Friday? Bring it up. You ever heard that song? Friday night, just got. When you get your, when, it, when majority of our people, ninety nine point nine percent of them, get their check on Friday, what are they doing after that? Bring it out. They doing what? Partying. Partying. Right. Bring they it out. out. Partying. Now I'm coming right back. Let me go drop this. They out. drop it. Hey, they they partying. They going to hang out, breaking God's commandments, cause your enemies know that today is the Sabbath day. Right. That's why they set this up down here. All over America, it's been pushed for so long, an ungodly custom has become something regular. Give me that uh, ungodly in, in the apocrypha. The ungodly custom that is, a, that is against the Most High God has become something regular so much. What is it? It's become so regular that now we don't even think about it. It's just, it is what it is. Saturday, oh, I'm going shopping. Because the world is shopping, so why not? Right. When God says, don't do that. Right. All right, read this. It's the book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14, verse 16. Thus, in the process of time, an ungodly custom grown strong was kept as a law. Thus, in the process of time. It says, thus, in the process of time, meaning over time. Once we first were taught to break God's commandments, I'm going to show you that in Maccabees because that's what our forefathers did. When we started breaking God's commandments, we never stopped. Come on. Thus, in the process of time, an ungodly custom grows strong. It says an ungodly custom grows strong. It's the ungodly custom is the breaking of God's commandments. Don't pay him no attention. He, he come all the time as a as a scoffer. He in his own world. We, we ain't stunning him. Read him again. Thus, in the process of time, an ungodly custom grows strong. 
So the Sabbath day, which is today, for all of you that are listening over here, the Sabbath day, which is today, we are, it's an ungodly custom, and you have grown to breaking it. We have grown, we have gone long, many years, for breaking God's commandments. Who changed these things? The so-called white man. You changed all these things. And it's written in the Bible that you would do this. And I will read it out of the Bible. Come on. What's kept as a law. This thing is kept as a law. So now every Saturday, what do people do? They wake up and say, you know what? I'm going to the market street. I'm going to spend some money. So I know you bought that today, but now you know. Today is the Sabbath day. Do not buy, sell or break God's Sabbath. That's all right? We got a school down the street full of sisters right. that can help guide you because there's nobody out here teaching our people. Good. They don't want to they want to push their uh food, their, food, their, food, their food, flyers food, on the corner for the, the for Jehovah Lilo. Witnesses, but they are not teaching our come people now, anything. Right. Nothing. Together, we need to come back to keeping God's commandments. Go back to that and do it in chapter 10 and verse 12. You want to touch it. Don't bring no attention. They will be like wolves. That's the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 10 and verse 12. And now, Israel, what doth the Lord thy God require of thee? But to fear the Lord thy God. To fear God is what we must do. Come on. To walk in all his ways. To walk in God's ways is what we should do. And to love him. And to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. If God says, don't break the Sabbath day, that's easy, right? He said, don't break it. That means, hold on, that. give me Exodus chapter 20. Give me Exodus chapter 20 and verse 8. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 8. I'm going to show you easily. This is an easy commandment, but people will not keep it. But I'm going to tell you something, sis. When the, when the, when the future prophecies have taken place, and the most High God in Christ set the real Israelites up back in society. You see what's going on down here? All this is going to be shut down. Right. That's right. All the nations know it. They all know that these things will be set in order when the real Israelites are set back up in power. Read what you got. That's the book of Exodus, chapter 20, and verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day. Read it again. Remember the Sabbath day. Joshua 6. Remember the Sabbath day. Remember the Sabbath day. Remember the Sabbath day. Remember the Sabbath day. To keep it holy. To keep it holy. Six days shall thy labor. Six days shall thy labor. And do all thy work. And do all thy work. But the seventh day. But the seventh day. Is the Sabbath. Is the Sabbath. Of the Lord thy God. Of the Lord thy God. You see that? Black people ain't never seen this type of order before. Don't you see brothers like this right here? This is the reason why we were never, it, it, it's a struggle for us to come together as a people. You know why? Because he wants to do his own thing. The Sabbath day was meant for us to keep it holy. Come on, read on. In it, in it, but in the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. We are supposed to do no work. I you hate, should not buy, removed, you not sell, come on. No, nor thy son, you are your son, come on. Nor thy daughter, thy man servant, nor thy maid servant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth. So God made heaven and earth in six days, come on. The sea and all that in them is, and rested on the seventh day. He rested on the Sabbath day, not the first day. Tomorrow is the first day of the week. That's when people gonna jump. They are gonna jump in their cars. They are gonna go to church and they are gonna claim, oh well, you know, today's Sunday. I don't broke the commandments all week. I need to go get forgiveness today. You see the confusion? We break the commandments all week long, break the Sabbath, and then on Sunday, the first day of the week, you go to church to try to make amends for all the sin that you committed all week. Right. That ain't in the Bible. Right. It don't work like that. Teacher. Now I'm gonna show you something. Give me Mark chapter eight. Let me show you how this how this Bible works. Give me Mark chapter 8 about the, the sower. Mark 4. four. Mark 4. 4.15. Four Come on. Read that. That's the book of Mark chapter 4 verse 15. Bring it out. These are they by the wayside. You are they by the wayside. Brother Quan, Sister Mary, uh, what's your name? Uh, Sean. And Rashawn. Sean and Rashawn. It says these are they by the wayside. That's you. You are the ones by the wayside. Come on. Well, the word is sown. The word is being sown in your minds right now. He ain't never heard this stuff in the Bible. Come on. But when they have heard it. But when you hear this word, we're sowing the word. Now you hear the word. Satan cometh immediately. Who cometh immediately? Satan cometh immediately. Who cometh immediately? Satan cometh immediately. Joshua 6. Satan 
cometh immediately. Satan cometh immediately. Satan cometh immediately. Satan cometh immediately. Satan cometh immediately. You see that? Is he not to doing do what? the same thing he always what? has? What does Satan come to do? And taketh away the word that was sown in their heart. And see, he come, to, he come to take away the word, the word that's being sown in your mind. He don't like that. Twisted. He don't like that because we read and the study the Bible. Deceiver. Read on. And these are likewise. These, these are likewise. Come on. Which are sown on stony ground. That's stone on, on stony ground. Come on. When they, when they have heard the word, immediately received it with gladness, and have and have no root in themselves, and so endure that very time. So that can't be you. You can't hear the word. scriptures and then say, you know what? That was a good song. That was a good, it was good to hear that. Now go on about your life, because what is happening is the Most High God is sending this word out to the four corners of the earth to wake up. Those that are going to hear this word and choose to keep the commandments and follow what is written. Everybody ain't going to do that. Most of our, give, uh, give me that to Zechariah, two-thirds uh, cut off. Two-thirds of our people are going to be cut off and die. They're going to hear this word, they're going to throw it behind their back, and they're going to keep living their life. They're going to keep living it up until destruction comes. You got what I want? Read that. That's the book of Zechariah, chapter 13, verse 8. And it shall come to pass. That in all the lands, you see that? It say, God says, it shall, this is future prophecy. It shall come to pass that in all the land, saith the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die. Two parts, two thirds of our people are going to be cut well, off and die. You know why? Because they are not going to keep the commandments. We won't. But the third shall be left therein. It says the third, one third of it is going to be left. That one third is Romans. 13. Like Romans chapter 13. I, I am very Read. Oh, Romans chapter 13 and verse 11. And now, and that knowing the time is that it now, it is high read, time. Read it again. And that knowing the time. God says that, that knowing the time. How do you know the time? Because you can look in, you can look on your TV and on your phone and see what's going on in Gaza. God says, and that knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep knowing the time now that it is high time to awake out of sleep so all the doctrine that you've learned in your life you gotta question it right you gotta question it and say well this is what i've learned but this is what i heard today let me study and find out what is the truth how do i find out what the truth is give me the truth give me that in songs what is the truth what is the truth eyes down we ain't worried about him eyes down eyes down what is the truth according to the Bible? This, this is the book of Psalms, chapter 119 and verse 142. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. The laws of God is the truth. What's wrong with thou shalt not kill? Yeah, what's wrong with it? What's wrong with thou shalt not steal? Nothing wrong with it, right? But black people, Hispanic people, and Native American people who the laws was given to, we killers and stealers. Right now. That's what we do. We're covenant breakers, right? So we have to find what's true and right according to God's laws and keep the commandments. Right. Right or wrong? We got to do the will of God, which is to what? Let me get that. Psalms 40 and 8. Psalms chapter 40, verse 8. Because it ain't a hard thing, but we make it hard. Right. It's hard when you've been... You've been breaking the commandments for so long, and now somebody tells you, hey, you got to change that. You know, bro, I've been doing this for, I'm 28 years old. I've been doing this for at least 24 years. I don't want to change that. But God says change it. Now we got a problem with it. It hurts. We're, 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 we're twisted in, in, in this constraint against the word of God because change, we think, is so hard. Do you smoke? You smoke? Weed? Yeah, you smoke weed? A little bit? Huh? Herbs. Herbs. But is that, are you supposed to smoke? No. No. The herb was not made to smoke. It was made to, you could take the uh, medicinal elements from it, but not smoke it. Because when you first, you smoke, young man? But have you ever tried to smoke? When you first drunk, when you, when you first hit, uh, tried to smoke, what happened to your lungs? What you did? Why? Cause that wasn't meant to go in the body. You see how easy that was? Hey, your, your lungs are like, what the hell? Get that, get that up out of here. Read what you got. That's the book of Psalms, chapter 40 and verse 8. 
I delight to do thy will, oh God. This is what we got to fall in at. We should have a delight to do God's will. But we don't delight to do it. We have the delight to search out God's will. Come on. Thy law. Thy what? Thy law. God's laws. Is within my heart. It got to be within your mind. Right. This has got to be, the heart is your mind. The Bible is making reference to your mind. Right. See, while our enemies are occupied over there with the land that don't belong to them, right. we have to be getting our minds right, right with God. Give me Romans chapter 12 and verse 2. We got to be fixing our minds here today in this captivity that we've been a part of. Right. Because salvation is coming. Lo and behold, salvation is coming. Right. That oppression will stop. Right. Read. That's the book of Romans, chapter 12 and verse 2. Yeah. And be not conformed to this world. God says, don't be conformed to this world. Yeah, there's God, there's land, there's, there's war in Gaza. Yeah, there's war with the Israelis right now. Right. But you don't get tied up in that. Right. That's the most high God's dealing. Right. You don't get tied up in that. You remember that you are the chosen people. That's that you the real Jews. That you are, who, that, that are the people that salvation is for. Right. Don't right. not be conformed to this world. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Renew your mind when it comes to the Sabbath day. Today is the Sabbath, not tomorrow. Renew your mind in that. So fringes on your clothes. That's a commandment. Renew your mind. Read it again. Renewing of your mind that ye may prove what it is that is acceptable. Read it, read it again. Read it right. Come on. And be not conformed to this world. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is good. What is that good? What is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God? Remember, we just read the will of God. We gotta prove to our, to the Most High God what that we want these these promises that are for us. Give me Revelation chapter two, verse nine. Yeah. Revelation chapter two, verse nine. The promises are for the blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans, the children of Israel, right. those that went into slavery. Right. We went into slavery for breaking God's laws. Right. Like, hold that. Let's prove that. Give me Luke chapter 21, 21, 24. That what I want? 21, 24. Read. That's the book of Luke chapter 21, verse 24. Yeah. I'm going to show you that the real Israelites ain't in the land right now. Read. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword. Come on. And shall be led away captive. Hold on. Read up. Read up. Read verse 21. To read at 321. That's the book of Luke, chapter 24, verse 21. Then let them which are in Judea flee unto the mountains, and let them which are in the midst of it. Verse 20. Start at verse 20. Verse 20. And when ye shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies. Now, when did this take place? When was Jerusalem compassed with armies? 70 AD. Titus and Vespasian, father and son, they had the Roman army circle around Jerusalem. Right. We were still in our land during this time. 70 AD. What did Christ say? And when you shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the, the, the desolation thereof is not. He said, no, when you see these, the Roman army, which was 70 AD, and circle around Jerusalem, know for sure that the destruction of Jerusalem is nigh. Come on. Then let them which is in Judea. Let them which are in Judea. Judea was a black land. It was only Judah, it was only Judah in that land. Jud Judites in that land. This was the land of Israel. Right. Only blacks was there. Come on. Flee to the mountains. He says, when you see this, flee to the mountains. When we were in our land, he said, when you see these Roman armies around you, flee to the mountains. Now, when we go back into history, if we line, if you take, if you could take your hands, you could push Israel right back together with the landmass of Africa. But there's something you have to remove that the so-called white man put there. What is it called? The Suez Canal. Right. They built and dug the Suez Canal through the land, and now they call it the Middle East. Right. There ain't no damn such thing as the Middle East. Right. Where's right. the Middle West? Where's the Middle North? Where's the Middle South? That don't exist. So there's no such thing as the Middle East. That canal that's there is a man-made canal. Right. But during this time, we could actually hike into the mountains, which is Upper Africa. That is what that is. Read on. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains, and let them which are in the midst of it depart out. And let not them that are in the countries enter there into. So when we were in the land during this time, we had to run, Maria. We had to run, Troy, Sean, Rashawn. We had to run out of the land because the Roman armies 
They surrounded the land. Why? Because we have we were breaking God's commandments in God's land. So we ran from Jerusalem into the inner parts of Africa. That's how we ended up in Africa. That's why when they tell us you should go back to Africa, our people think that Africa is the homeland. Because we ran from Jerusalem into Africa. That's how we got there. It's recorded right here. Read on. For these be the days of vengeance. God says, when you see this happening, these are the days of vengeance that I promised would happen to the real Israelites. Come on. That all these things which are written may be fulfilled. But woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. So if you had babies during those days, God said, woe unto you, because destruction is coming on our land. Today, do we have our land? Where our land at today? We don't got no damn land. Hell, Puerto Rico ain't even your land. The white man on that too. Ain't it? Tell the truth, Maria. It's true. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Come on. For there shall be great distress uh -huh. in the land and wrath upon this people. Come on. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword. So the Bible prophesies that the real Israelites, they were going to fall by the edge of the sword. And what else? And shall be led away captive. They shall be what? Led away captive. So if the real Israelites that were in the land during that time was led away captive, where are they today? Where are they today? They are scattered all across America, in Puerto Rico, in Mexico, in America, in South America, in all parts of the planet Earth, we have been scattered. So who are the people in the land today? Let's find out what the Bible say. Read on. Oh, he lost the scripture, y'all. What's going on here? Come on. Chapter 21, verse 24. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword. So the real Israelites will fall by the edge of the sword. And shall be led away captive. And we will go into slavery, come on. Into all nations. Into what? Into all nations. Puerto Rico, Mexico, uh, uh, Guantanamo Bay. We're all over the world, come on. And Jerusalem. And Jerusalem, our homeland. Shall be trodden down of the Gentiles. It shall be trodden down by who? Of the Gentiles. So the people that are in, that are in our land today are what? Gentiles. They the real Gentiles, but they right. told you that you the Gentiles. Right. No, you the real Israelites that had to flee out of the land. Right. Right. You the real people of God that have been put into captivity, whose names have been changed to Puerto Rican, right. to nigger and African American, right. to Mexicans. We are the children of Israel, brothers and sisters. This is what we got to wake up to, and we got to come back to keeping God's commandments. Go back to Revelation two and nine. Bring it out. Read. Revelation chapter 2 verse 9 I know thy works and tribulation God says he know your works Troy He know your tribulation Mary Come on And poverty He know your poverty Sean and Rashad Come on But thou art rich But you rich Why? Why are you rich? Because all the promises in the Bible belong to you right. All the promises in the Bible They belong to you And only you Give me that and hold that Hold that You know what I want? Yeah, I know you are. This, this brother right here. Come on. Romans chapter 9, verse 3. Come on. For I could wish that myself were accursed from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. So you see how he says according to the flesh? The Israelites, according to the flesh. Come on. Who are Israelites? Who are what? Who are Israelites? No, they Gentiles. Israelites. To whom pertaineth the adoption. So the, the adoption pertaineth to you. What is the adoption? The adoption is Christ dying on the cross and bringing us back into the fold and being one under Christ again. That is the adoption. But they don't teach us that growing up. We don't learn that in church. They don't teach this in school. We have no clue about the adoption and what else? And the glory. The glory is that we're going to rule this earth again. Right. The glory is that there's a kingdom that no eye has seen, no ear, no ear has heard about that God has set up for us. We have a kingdom already waiting for us, but we must do the commandments in order to get there. We All must right. keep the commandments to get there. And the glory, come on. And the covenant. The covenants, come on. And the giving of the law. Come on. And the service uh -huh. of God. All of these go back to that in Revelation chapter 2 and verse 9. Read it again. And the covenants. Uh -huh. And the promises. And the promises. Now go back to Revelation 2 and 9. Revelation chapter 2, verse 9. I know thy works. Uh -huh and tribulation and poverty but thou art rich you're rich because of everything we just read in romans the adoption is yours 
All of the promises of yours, the glory is yours. Right. It all belongs to you. Right. Read. And I know the blasphemy. Uh oh. Blasphemy means what? Lies. Bring it out. Lies. God says that he knows what? The blasphemy. He knows the lies of them which say they are Jews. Who is on the earth today that say they are Jews? Bring it up. Who is on the earth today that say they are Jews? Is it us? Do we say that we're Jews? Hell no. Nah. Mary said Puerto Rican. <laughs> Troy said I'm black. Yeah. We don't say that we're the Jews. So who says that? The people that are in the land today. Right. They right. say they are Jews, but what did God say? And are not. Wait a minute. Read that again. He said what? I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not. So the people that are in our land today that are catching pure hell are praising to the Most High God from Palestine. They are not the Jews. Right. That's why they catching hell. Right. That's why they going through what they going through because they are not the Jews. Right. They don't even say that they're a Jew. They say I'm Jewish. Yeah. I'm Jew. I'm Israeli. They don't say I'm an Israelite. They say no, I'm Israeli. So, Jewish. If I said Mary, I'm gonna be to your house around five-ish. What time am I coming? Somewhere around there. Somewhere around there. Somewhere around there. So if you say that you're Jewish, what are you saying? I'm somewhere around there. <laughs> I'm somewhere around being like a Jew. They're not saying, they will, they will not say I am a Jew. They will say, no, I'm Jewish. Why? Because they stole your nationality. Right. They have adopted your customs and they are living or they are trying to live the life of a real Jew. Right. But you can't live the life of a real Jew because you are not the Jew. That's right. I'm looking at the Jews. I'm looking at the Jews. We are the Jews. Who's the king? Who's the king? We are the real Jews. And you must glory and represent for the most high God when you get this understanding. Because they have spent billions and billions of dollars so that you will not get this information. Read on. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not. But what? But are the synagogue of Satan. You mean to tell me that the people in our land today are what? The synagogue of Satan. The Bible put that in the Bible. The Bible says the people that say they are Jews and are not, they are the synagogue of Satan. <laughs> now let's read on. Fear none of those. God says, but don't fear none of that. Don't fear none of these things. All of you what that you've been through in this life, everything that you know your forefathers and foremothers have been through, fear none of these things. Come on. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold. The devil shall cast some of you into prison. We already know this part is going to happen. Why? Because we're teaching the true understanding of the Bible. They're going to cast us into prison. They're going to throw us into prison. Some of us are going to be put to death. Just like the apostles for teaching this Bible the way that it's being taught. We understand that. But this is what we glory in. This is what we wake up every day for. Because there's nothing better on earth than to die for the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that died for you. There's nothing better that you could do on earth except resurrect the minds of your people to bring back and establish the glory that is set for them by the Most High God. There ain't nothing greater to do. You got to get your mind right and understand what we're going through as a people has been ordained from the beginning. So that when we get back in our kingdom, there will be no more captivity. There will be no more pain. There will be no more death. We, are, we would have conquered all that the Most High God has set out for us to do to prove that we are the people of God. Read on. That ye may be tried. And ye shall have... We're going we to be... Put, read that part again? That ye may be tried. Read up. Read up. For fear none of these things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried. So we're going to be cast into prison and put to death so that we may be tried. So Troy, you, when you come into this, when you come into this understanding, you start keeping the commandments, Satan's going to try you. Satan's going to try you, man. You come into this understanding and you say, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I want to start keeping the commandments. When you put that dress on and you sew them fringes on it, Satan is going to try you. Why? Because Satan's job is to make sure that you don't get none of this kingdom. His job is to make sure you don't get none of the glory that's set up for you. That's his job. Uh, the devils that cast some of you into prison, that he may be tried. And he shall have tribulation ten days. We're going to have tribulation. So we're not. it's not going to be a walk in the park for us to get the kingdom. Why? Because first you got to renew this. You got to change this right here first. Give me Psalms chapter 19 and verse 7. You got to change this first. When you start to change this, you're going to say, all right, 
God's law says do this, and then you apply it. The more you apply it, the be the better you become spiritually. But outwardly, you're gonna get persecution from your family, from your friends. They are gonna say, Troy, why are you growing your beard out? What's going on with you, bro? Are oh, you following them Israelites, huh? Oh, that's what you're doing. What are the funny little things on your clothes? What do you mean you gotta keep the Sabbath day? What are you talking about? That's what's gonna happen. That's what's going to happen. That's Satan trying you to see if you're worthy of the kingdom. You mean to tell me you don't wake up every day and you ain't tired of what you see? Bring it up. You ain't tired of the condition we live in, Mary? Are you tired? Hell yeah, you tired. We all tired. So what are we going to do about it? Bring it up. What are we going to do about it? Our power is right here. This is what we're going to do about it. What you got? Read that. Psalms chapter 19, verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect. God's laws are perfect. I'm gonna give, give me Numbers chapter 15. God's laws are perfect. Right. You tell me what's wrong with this. Read. Numbers chapter 15, verse 38. Speak unto the children of Israel. You are the children of Israel, come on. And bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments. Borders, with an S. In the borders of their garments, come on. Throughout their generation. So throughout your generation, we should have been taught to put uh, fringes around the borders of our garments. Let me show you something. Uh, let me show you this right here. This is an ancient photo. Look at this. This is an ancient photo. This ain't from 2023. Where brothers like this be like, are these the four corners? Why aren't they on your four corners? Yeah, run around the four corners of your garment. Ain't the four corners. Now you look at them, these American Indians. This is a photo from ancient times. How do they know to put fringes around the borders of their garment? How the hell do they know that? They don't got, they ain't got no, they don't got no um, zipsies. They don't got no zipsies on the side of them. But he said, no, the four corners. No, that's, that's borders around the garment. That's around the garment. How do they know that? Because it's recorded in the Bible. That's why. Unlike this brother, he don't read well. Read it again. Speak unto the children of Israel and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments throughout their generations and that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue and it shall be unto you so you're supposed to put a border on top of the garment on top of the fringes you put a border of blue so if I saw Mary I don't even have to know you you could be two two three streets down and I see sister she got on a dress Oh, she got on fringes. Hey, shalom, sister, most high Christ blessed. I know that you're an Israelite and that you know that you're an Israelite keeping God's commandments by how you dress. Right. Because it's our dress code that, we, that he gave us. Come on. And it shall be unto you for a fringe that ye may look upon it. So you're supposed to look upon the fringes and remember all the commandments of the Lord. This is how you remember all the commandments of God. So when you're out there and you're having those evil thoughts, Normally, throughout the day, you find brothers doing this, touching their fringes. It's a reminder, bro, stay in the spirit. Don't fornicate. Don't be uh, lusting. Don't be committing adultery. Don't be stealing. Don't have hatred. That's what these remind you. It's supposed to be a reminder to keep God's commandments. Come on. And do them. And do the commandments. That's what we're supposed to be doing. What I had, what I had you holding? Go back there in Psalms. Read. Psalms chapter 19, verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect. God's laws is perfect. Come on. Converting the soul. It will convert your soul once you once you dive into it. You got to dive into these laws and let it become one with you. Come on. The testimony of the Lord is sure. God's testimonies is sure. When we read the Old Testament and the New Testament, the promises that are given to us, they are sure. Come on. Making wise the simple. Now, our people are very simple-minded. We're supposed to read the commandments and read the, the, the history of what's going on with our people and get some type of sense and say, you know what? I'm going to change my ways. I'm going to change my ways and try and, and line up with what is recorded in the Bible so that I can become a better person. I need to learn to keep the faith in Christ right. so that I can inherit the kingdom that's set up for us. Right. If we're called by God's name, give me that in Jeremiah 28, verse 8. The prophet, excuse me, Verse 8, the prophets that have been before me and before thee of old prophesied both against 
many countries. So that's what we're doing today. When we bring up the history of Gaza, when we bring up the history of Palestine, when we see what's going on, that's what we're doing. Our forefathers did the same thing. They prophesied against many nations. Come on. And against great kingdoms. And a great gate against great kingdoms. We're prophesying against a great kingdom now. The great kingdom that has set himself up in your mind, America. The great kingdom that set itself up in Troy's mind, America. In Sean and Rashawn's mind. We're prophesying against that great kingdom within your minds right now. Tearing it down so that you can be built up on the law, statutes, and commandments of God. That's what we're building. That's what our job is to do. To bring you back to what has been promised to you by the Most High God. Nation is men leading by example.